So, a time fracture. Where to begin? Hi everyone, uh, it's Miles here. Welcome back to the channel for 2022. Brand new year, exciting stuff. I'm very, very excited and hopefully we'll have a better year than the last in terms of, you know, that little pandemic thing. Today, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk to you about a recent experience of mine when I went to London to see, at long last, Time Fracture, the immersive Doctor Who experience theatrical event thing. I'm here just to talk you through my experience uh, and just let you know what it was all about, really, and whether it's worth going to see yourself. Spoiler alert, it actually is, definitely. You know, really quite a bit worth going to see yourself. Yeah, maybe just go and book a ticket now. So originally I was actually gifted these Time Fracture tickets for my 21st birthday way back in October 2020. So just about a year and a half ago now. I was going to be seeing it in April 2021 for Easter. And due to various circumstances, it kept getting pushed back due to Covid and flooding was a big one for Time Fracture. Unfortunately, the flooding really made a massive impact uh, on their uh, their you know, the, the space they were performing in. After all that, I finally booked in a definite date, almost a year after I was originally meant to see it, uh, on January the 5th, 2022, uh, to see Time for Actual at long last, and I couldn't have been more excited. So as it approached the big day itself, on the day before, uh, on Tuesday the 4th of January, uh, me and Izzy, who was going to be seeing the show with me, we hopped on a train and journeyed all the way down to London, uh, once we got there, we hit the tube and uh, made our way to our hotel for the time we were going to be there. You know, while we were in London, uh, I wanted to take the chance to do a bit of sightseeing, saw Piccadilly Circus for the first time, which was pretty, pretty cool. Is it Piccadilly Circus? It's the one that Star Rose, you know, the, the big thing with all the signs and stuff. It's pretty cool. And also, you know, visit a few shops. Of course, I dragged my uh, ever-loving girlfriend into Forbidden Planet and had a look around there and after debating for hours of a, whether to get various things, Izzy being the wonderful girlfriend she is, decided to buy me um, a wonderful Doctor Who comic, um, 12th Doctor One, um, which there was a load of them on offer there. Seriously, if you're around that Food and Planet mega store in London. They've got Titan comics literally coming out of both ends for ridiculously good prices. Um, I think this one was literally a pound. And also, after ages of just sort of going, should I get it? Shouldn't I get it? She literally picked this out of my hand and said, I'm taking it to the till and I'm going to buy it for you. She was very kind enough to give me the reconnaissance Dalek from Jodie Whittaker's first Dalek story. She was lovely enough to, to buy that for me, so I'm a very lucky boy. And then following that, of course, was the day itself. The day came, the 5th of January, the big day that I would be seeing Time Fracture. We had a lovely day to start off with in Covent Garden. Uh, just, you know, lovely food, lovely sights, all that sort of stuff. All the while, I was continuously in my head going, I'm going to be seeing Time Fracture today. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So our performance that we were seeing was at six o'clock. I think there's usually one beforehand, sort of uh, like 12-ish, like a matinee type performance, but we want to see the evening one. Um, so um, we got went back to the hotel to sort of get cleaned up, get ready, get changed, and just mentally prepare ourselves, well, I say ourselves, myself, um, for the horrors and excitement that was to come. So it is currently... 4.42 precisely uh, and in about 20-ish minutes we're going to be heading off for Doctor Who time fracture and I'm very excited. We've got Doctor Who on just to get in the in the mood. Um, we're just all getting ready, getting set. I've got my Sonic ready to take because of the child I am. Are we ready? Are we feeling good? Yeah, I just need to put my hair in a little. Yeah, I think we're basically, <laughs> we're basically ready. <laughs> I've been quite nervous for it. I, I, I am as well, actually, weirdly. I'm not performing, so it's... Yeah, yeah, just like... But I just want to make the most of it, and I want to have a good time, and I want to see as much as possible. Screaming. Exactly. We'll be there soon, but I'm very excited, so we'll finish getting ready. And then, at long last, it was time to go. We're on our way. Here we go. I'm very excited now. This is, this is when the excitement's probably here. It is. It's amazing. So we made our way uh, to Davies Muse, where the performance was taking place, and we arrived with time to spare as well, uh, finding the 
beautiful unit black site, as it was called, with the unit logo adorned across its doors. Um, we found the queue, which wasn't hard to find because, you know, there was about, I think, three Tom Baker scarves, definitely a Jodie Whittaker, and an amazing real-time Sixth Doctor coat, which, I, I mean, how niche and how cool is that? That's amazing. So we queued up and got checked in by a unit trooper, very cool, uh, who also gave us these little token things, one each, um, which were to be exchanged at the bar for drinks. Uh, basically, because of the amount of times that our show had been changed, you know, I think five times by the last count, um, until we you know, finally settled on the performance that we were actually able to go to, um, we were offered these... Uh, free drinks basically as a little consolation for that which was really lovely of them uh very kind indeed and were very much appreciated as well so the queue moved on uh we gave our coats to the cloakroom and we were in now i won't say too much about the actual experience right now um i'm gonna try and avoid spoilers where possible but it was bloody good really so we weren't able to uh, take any photos or videos during the actual performance understandably um but once the show was over we were taken back through to the unit site um me and izzy grabbed uh, another cocktail each on the way through uh, and just were allowed to have a little play on the set which was a lot of fun probably i, I might have had too much fun <laughs> That was great, really. That was that was that was enjoyable. And yeah, this was my initial reaction off the back of seeing the show. That was insane. I cried. I got to cry. So once that was all over, we headed out through the gift shop. Uh, I'd spent a good 20 minutes deciding on what to get, having already decided that I was going to be getting a poster and a program, only to come out having got a poster and a program. I won't show you too much of the program because there's a lot of spoilers in there relating to the show itself, but safe to say it's very well put together, so grab one if you can. And the poster itself, it's, it's blooming nice, really. The fact that it's got one of the you know, Time Lord Victorious Daleks on there, is purchase worth enough? Is that a phrase? It's become a phrase. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I've now got Brian the Ude watching over me as I sleep. Um, anyway, after purchasing those items and having to tear myself away from the site, um, we headed back on the tube with me in a constant state of shookness from the experience. Um, I couldn't quite string sentences together. And on the way back, we had a lovely little tapas meal uh, at the Top Hat restaurant and a few more cocktails while we discussed what we'd just witnessed. Finally, at long last, the day was over and we reached the hotel. Well, that was an experience. Uh, this is like initial thoughts. Yeah. Um, I mean, it might be because I've had three cocktails down me, but like, insane insane um did i or did i not cry i can confirm viewer that i stood next to miles as i was sobbing wiping away the tears <laughs> at the, ve the the seriously the final act scene. i have the final scene act scene, scene. the final bit um <laughs> i won't reveal anything because obviously you know no, spoilers and whatnot spoilers. but like Sweetie. i was told by certain people i've seen grown men weep at this finale and i was like okay i'm sure it's good but right, not that good and, and this grown man if you can call him a grown man i, I yeah i wept <laughs> i wept Do you and want to sit still because this is going to be so shaky i know but i'll edit it highlight uh, one of the highlights i mean there's many um Davros, obviously people know that Davros is in it. That was so good. We were some of the privileged, very few. There were six of us, wasn't there? Was there were six of us in there, one. yeah. You can't reveal too much. And and to reveal too much would be to spoil it certain aspects. It spoils it, definitely. Um, 
but say to say, I mean, the moment when we were in the interval, when I'm sure a lot of people know, you know, you're sat in a spaceship drinking cocktails whilst you're being sung to by an alien. That is, was amazing. Is amazing. A little Brian the Ude as well, who obviously we, said, we know is said, involved. Excuse me he said, to Excuse me. me to us, to yeah. both of us. Oh, both of us. Right. Well, I took it as me, she took it as her. Exactly. I think we both, he said, Excuse us to both of us, which I think is cool. a compliment, really. Cool. You know, this is the closest we got to, to interact and with Brian. To some great songs in the interview. Great songs in really that nice. stunning performance uh, from. The alien. <laughs> I mean, um, I'd love to know what her name was. I'd love to know. She's an amazing, like. I'll have to check the program. I'll have to check the program. So and we, we really got involved with it. You know, we. Uh, we did. I think you you were the one who sort of pushed yourself a bit bit more first off. Well, like, yeah. Uh, we I was a bit to, more nervous at first. We had to come up with a suggestion for a certain thing. Yeah. Um, we team. had to do a bit of a team bit of teamwork, which at first felt like I feel like I'm back in university in yeah. a breakout room. Yeah. Yeah. On but, Zoom, like it was. But normal. like. As you got into it. There was a beautiful moment right at the beginning where there is this kid dressed as Jodie with Jodie's screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And one of the actors went, have you been chosen by the doctor? Obviously, it's like the whole premise yeah. of the whole thing. And the kid was like, no, we don't know, hopefully. Yeah. And the guy went, well, I can see. Um, she's lent you her screwdriver, so you must have been. And he went, it was amazing because... You're in that environment where everybody's into it and, and it just, even if the actors were bad, which they weren't, which they, they, were, were they, were, they were great, yeah. everyone else being into it was just like so uh, Yeah, nice. there was more people into it than, than not. And even, you know... Yeah, there was one guy, one singular man I saw sat at the back not getting involved. Yeah. And that was it. That was Thing it. is though... And there was like 30 or 40 of us. Even if you're not willing to get involved... I, I think you still you still have a great time. Yeah. You'd have mo it's it. I heard it so many people say it, but you would have an even a better time if you do really want to get involved. And just, if you, know. you just want to stand at the back and like wave your hands around occasionally, yeah, like not even that. You don't have to because you still get so uh, much. Of and and you know, Doctor Who nerds delight because you know I would say one little thing. I got to tell a character what Terranium was. And to know what Terranium was from a William Hartnell serial in 1965 and, and to use that finally is insane. So. Didn't I say what art from energy You was? said what art from energy was though. <laughs> the most yeah. audience interaction came in the final scene. Yeah. And if you go and think that you've not interacted much. Or you, you by the final like scene, you, you will be. No, but because of the way it's set in the final scene, if you want to hang on. The final bit is your time to shine, definitely. So go and see it if you can. It's an incredible time and yeah, make sure you give it a watch. Go and see it. It was amazing. I think it's it's time for some sleep <laughs> now. I was literally about to say that. It's time for some sleep. Definitely go. time for some sleep, but yeah. <clears throat> Amazing. Amazing. Fantastic. We'll be back. So I don't know what more can be added um that hasn't already been addressed there in that little little uh, clip. Um, I mean, I'm already trying to avoid spoilers as much as I can, um, but I will certainly talk about things that have been revealed on social media, you know, on the official Doctor Who Twitter account or Time Fracture themselves have announced. The highlights for me, a lot of little character stuff, really. The unit personnel uh, were fantastic characters, really loved all of them. Really, you became very invested in them as people, uh, very attached to them to the point where you didn't really want to leave them. Uh, they were, it was amazing how within that short space of time that you were with them, they became very close to you. My favourite being Dr Yates, who uh, me and Izzy spent most of our time with, um, points to anyone who can make the link with that name. If you can't make the link of that name, then are you a Doctor Who fan? Keep an ear out for other little, little links um, like that in terms of names and whatnot, uh, especially of the unit people um there was some really lovely little ones in there and also you know keep an ear out for the odd voice that you might hear as well uh because you never know you know uh, i won't say any more than that you know once you go through the time fracture itself uh the, the, the characters you meet um ones that you know and don't know there were some lovely characters um that to say too much about them would kind of reveal too much. Really nice and engaging people um, who you really just wanted to get on board with. And of course, 
familiar faces. Queen Elizabeth, great sequence involving her. I'm very glad that we got to experience that. Brian the Ude, fantastic, really great. Didn't see him as much as I would have liked to. I kind of saw him from afar with, you know, he was sort of involved in other groups and things like that. So if I did go again, I'd really want to seek him out and have a chat. Um, although he did say a few little words to me and Izzy as um, we were having a cocktail. A very prominent one, as I sort of said in the clip, Davros. Uh, I'm very privileged to have uh, experienced that part of Time Fracture. Unexpectedly as well. I went in knowing I wanted to see Davros and thankfully the route just appeared straight away and it was lovely. It, well, it was terrifying, uh, but lovely in equal measure. Um, very, very good. <laughs> You know, if you can, if you end up seeing Davros, you're in for a treat. It's very cool, and I can thankfully, you know, say that that's not a spoiler because I think last month maybe the Doctor Who official Twitter account announced that Davros was a part of Time Fracture. It is common knowledge, um, and it is blooming great. Another sort of example of that very recently, someone I wasn't going to talk about because I thought, oh well, they haven't mentioned anything about this character appearing, um, but as of, I think, a week ago or something like that, um, Romana was announced as being one of the characters in the lineup. In fact, she's on the new poster that um, uh, has been released and is used for the promotion of Time Fraction now. One that is very, very nicely done. I love to have that, that biggest ensemble poster. It's a shame, actually. I love this one, but I would have really liked to have had the new version, the, the updated uh, kind of revamped Time Fracture poster with a Cyberman in the middle and all these different characters off centre. But anyway, I digress. Romana was a great character on obviously me being the Doctor Who fan that I am. Once we were involved with her, I clung on and would not leave her side, which sounds very creepy when I put it like that, but it wasn't. It was very heartfelt and um, she was very happy with you know the support I was giving her, at least she said. So, you know, uh, Romana, Romana was lovely, which is a sentence I never thought I would say ever. What more can be said? The, the interval, the, even the interval was blooming wonderful. Having our little space cocktails of quantum punch or solar flare, one or the other, and whatever I had was, was lovely. I've said it plenty of times already in all the clips you've seen, um, but the finale is something else entirely. I, d I did cry. I honestly cried. And it sounds pathetic. It sounds stupid. It sounds silly. But it's wonderful. Honestly, it is everything. That, that finale, which I won't say anything about because you need to live it. You need to experience it, which sounds so pretentious. But honestly, having gone into it thinking, oh, you know, it'll be good, but it won't, it won't hit me there, surely. It's just a theatre show. And there was this, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. There was my childhood. There was th something that I've invested my entire, near enough my entire life in. Uh, I'm just looking at all the DVDs and stuff now. Um, and it was incredible. Um, it made me proud to be a Doctor. It sounds so pretentious, it sounds so so overblown, but honestly, it did make me proud to be a Doctor Who fan. Um, and and the principles of the show. Um, it's it's it it is it's beautiful. It's beautiful and um. To say, to say any more would, would, would ruin it. You need to see it. You need to see it. Because the emotional impact for a Doctor Who fan, it's it's incredible. I, I, I don't know what more I can ramble on about, really, but thank you to everyone at Time Fracture for, for making it uh, an incredible experience, an incredibly memorable time um, for investing themselves in this in this crazy show you made it a really special and amazing time for for me as a Doctor Who fan. Thanks to my amazing girlfriend um, for putting up with my geekiness and my geeky nonsense throughout the whole experience and just making it the best holiday ever. Um, 
I love you. And uh, it was just great to share that with her. So that was fantastic. And also, thank you to all of you for watching. I can't recommend it enough, honestly. If you're able to get down there, uh, if you're able to afford it, it, it it's I believe that the tickets are slightly cheaper than they, they used to be. So check them out. If you think you can afford it and if you think you've got the time to go down there and, and experience it, please do. Please, please do. Because you really won't regret it. And I'm really, really tempted to go again uh, just to you know experience all these avenues that I didn't go down. Go and see it. Um, what a way to start off the new year. I had an amazing time. And yeah, save the universe. What of it? Thanks for watching, everyone. You've been great. Hopefully there's going to be lots more on the channel through the year. Um, uh, I've got the audios, series four of the audios coming up soon. I'm editing them as we speak uh, in an, you know, when I can find the time to. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy those and any other videos that, that come about. Um, yeah, I, I hope this is another good year for the channel. Thank you all for your support in 2021. Thanks for watching, everyone. A very happy new year, and I'll hopefully see you again very soon for some more videos, whatever they may be. Goodbye for now. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And if you've got a few shekels to spare, you can find a link in the description below to my Ko-fi page, where you can support myself and the channel. Anything you give is greatly appreciated, and will go towards creating bigger and better content. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.